In a decisive push to bolster counterterrorism readiness, the Ministry of Defense recently finalized 13 contracts, worth Rs 1,981.90 crore, under the Emergency Procurement Mechanism, just shy of the Rs 2,000 crore sanctioned outlay. Executed through accelerated fast-track procedures, the acquisitions aim to swiftly close critical operational gaps in areas like surveillance, mobility, protection, and firepower. The procurement includes advanced systems such as drone detection technologies, low-level radars, loitering munitions, remotely piloted aerial vehicles, shore ads, and multiple categories of drones, personal protection gear like bulletproof jackets and ballistic helmets, along with heavy and medium quick reaction fighting vehicles and night sights for rifles, were also included. The move highlights the government's ongoing focus on indigenous, mission-critical defense technologies to strengthen frontline capabilities amid evolving internal security threats. India is set to extend its Indigenous Ballistic Missile Defense System, or BMD, to Bangalore, Chennai and Hyderabad, following the near completion of Phase 1 deployment, in Delhi and Mumbai. This move addresses growing regional threats, particularly Pakistan's recent deployment of the long-range FATA-2 rocket system. Developed by DRDO, the BMD features a two-tiered interception strategy, with Prithvi Air Defense and Prithvi Defense Vehicle, for Exoatmospheric and Advanced Air Defense or AAD for endo-atmospheric missile interception. The decision reflects the increasing strategic value of southern cities, especially Hyderabad's role in defense manufacturing. A single, centrally located site is being considered to protect all three cities efficiently. Meanwhile, phase two of the BMD program is underway, with advanced AD-1 and AD-2 interceptors in testing, aimed at countering intermediate-range ballistic missiles, IRBMs and intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs. This expansion aligns with India's broader efforts to fortify national security against modern missile threats. India has achieved a major milestone in hypersonic weapons development, with DRDO successfully testing a scramjet engine for over 1,000 seconds, marking a global benchmark in sustained supersonic combustion. DRDO Chairman Dr. Samir V. Comet confirmed the achievement stating the breakthrough could power missiles over 3,000 kilometers at speeds above Mach 5. However, the formal sanction to develop a hypersonic cruise missile using this technology is still pending from the Ministry of Defense. Unlike hypersonic glide vehicles or HGVs, which have received government funding, hypersonic cruise missiles require continuous propulsion and offer superior maneuverability and evasion capabilities. India's progress builds on earlier scramjet milestones like the 2020 HSDDV test. While the achievement positions India among global leaders, Dr. Comet emphasized that further advancement depends on financial approval to transition from lab success to operational deployment. On June 24, 2025, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh approved a pivotal reform authorizing the Chief of Defense Staff and Secretary of the Department of Military Affairs to issue joint instructions and orders across the Army, Navy, and Air Force. This shift aims to replace the earlier fragmented approach, where each service issued overlapping directives on inter-service matters, often causing administrative inefficiencies. The first joint order, focusing on the approval and standardization of such instructions, was released immediately after the announcement. This reform marks a critical step toward greater integration and jointness within India's armed forces. By centralizing command under the CDS and DMA, the ministry seeks to enhance coordination, reduce duplication, and promote operational synergy, ultimately paving the way for a more unified and modernized military structure to tackle evolving security challenges. India has reportedly initiated the development of a conventional, non-nuclear version of its Agni-5 intercontinental ballistic missile, led by the Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO. This new variant, designed to carry a massive 7.5-ton warhead, marks a strategic shift towards high-impact precision strikes without invoking nuclear escalation. Though the missile's range will reduce from over 5,000 km to approximately 2,000 to 2,500 km due to the heavier payload, it will retain Agni-5's core technologies like canister launch, solid fuel, and high accuracy. The missile is expected to feature two specialized warheads, 
an airburst type for wide area destruction, and a bunker buster capable of penetrating targets buried up to 100 meters deep. This adaptation aims to deter regional threats and enable rapid strikes on high value, hardened military assets, reflecting India's evolving defense strategy for modern, conventional warfare. Amid rising tensions following Iranian threats to block the Strait of Hormuz after recent U.S. strikes, concerns over global energy disruptions have grown. For India, which imports over 35% of its crude and 42% of its LNG through Hormuz, the risk lies in short-term supply delays and freight cost surges. However, analysts noted that India's evolving import strategy, driven by record Russian supplies of 2.2 million barrels per day, in June, along with inflows from the U.S., Brazil, and West Africa, now bypasses Hormuz and mitigates exposure. India's reserves cover 90 days, and Saudi Arabia's alternative Red Sea route via the Petrolinyambu Corridor also offers a safety net. While the chance of a full Hormuz shutdown is deemed low, due to potential self-damage to Iran's exports, even temporary disruptions could fuel volatility and raise tanker rates across oil markets. During the Eastern Region Power Ministers Conference on June 25, 2025, Union Power Minister Manohar Lal announced plans to establish a nuclear power plant and a 1,000-megawatt battery storage unit in Bihar. While the plant's exact location and capacity remain unspecified, the center gave in-principle approval for the battery unit, linked to renewable energy generation. The minister praised Bihar's efforts in reducing aggregate technical and commercial losses, and installing 80 lakh smart meters. He also confirmed the center's allocation of an additional 500 megawatt to Bihar for the next six months, emphasizing India's transition from power deficient to power surplus status. Lal noted the country is meeting peak demands while exporting surplus electricity. He also highlighted cybersecurity in the power sector, referencing Operation Sindor, and stressing the importance of islanding schemes to safeguard critical infrastructure. On June 25, 2025, France-based aerospace giant Safran announced plans to establish a new maintenance, repair, and overhaul facility, Safran Aircraft Engine Services India, in Hyderabad. The upcoming facility will focus on servicing the M88 engines that power the Rafale fighter jets operated by the Indian Air Force. The announcement was made by Safran's general manager, Pierre Fernandez, during a meeting with Telangana Industries Minister D. Sridhar Babu. The project is expected to generate around 150 jobs by the end of 2026, with the potential to create up to 750 additional positions in later phases. The new facility will be Safran's fourth site in Hyderabad, expanding its existing presence which includes units focused on leap engine parts and electrical systems for military aircraft. The LEAP engine MRO service is scheduled to become operational before the end of 2025. Safran credited strong support from the Telangana government in facilitating its expansion and expressed optimism about the region's role as a growing aerospace hub. The announcement was part of a broader Indo-French industry engagement initiative, highlighting Telangana's efforts to attract global defense and aviation investments and strengthen its position in India's aerospace ecosystem. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited is set to deliver at least six Tejas MK-1A light combat aircraft to the Indian Air Force by March 2026 after delays caused by the late delivery of F-404 engines from GE Aerospace. House production had been impacted by global supply chain disruptions and workforce issues at GE, resulting in only one of the 12 expected engines being delivered between 2023 and mid-2025. The delay drew concern from Air Chief Marshal A.P. Singh, who urged HAL to accelerate deliveries. HAL Chairman D.K. Sunil confirmed that six aircraft are ready, pending engine integration. GE has now committed to delivering the remaining engines by March 2026, starting from July 2025. HAL plans to produce 16 jets next year, 
provided engine deliveries continue smoothly. The Tejas MK-1A is a modern, multi-role fighter designed to replace aging MiG-21s and enhance the IF's declining squadron strength. The Ministry of Defense had earlier signed a rupees 48,000 crore contract for 83 jets and is planning to procure 97 more for rupees 67,000 crore. HAL has also secured a contract for 156 Pratchhand light combat helicopters, with deliveries starting in 2028. Export interest in the Tejas platform continues to grow amid these developments. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited is expected to finalize a major agreement with GE Aerospace by March 2026 to jointly manufacture F-414 jet engines in India. The deal, initiated during Prime Minister Narendra Modi's 2023 U.S. visit, represents a critical leap in India's push for defense self-reliance. HAL Chairman D.K. Sunil confirmed that 80% of the technology transfer terms have been agreed upon, and the focus has now shifted to finalizing the commercial terms of the deal, which is expected to be sealed within the current financial year. The F-414 engines, already powering combat jets in countries such as the U.S., Sweden, and Australia, will be produced in India under this agreement. This is particularly significant given the U.S.'s traditionally strict controls over the export of sensitive military technologies, and will also power India's upcoming Tejas Mk-2 and advanced medium combat aircraft AMCA. These platforms will significantly enhance the Indian Air Force's capabilities through stealth features, superior payloads, and advanced electronic warfare systems. Together, the HAL GE collaboration mark a turning point in India's defense manufacturing sector, enabling domestic production of advanced aerospace systems and reducing reliance on foreign suppliers. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.